Hey, what's up? John Shred here. And today I am unboxing, showing you the Founders Edition 4090. Now, I say unbox because this unboxing is a little bit unique. And I want to share it with you, show you the insides, and do some benchmarks. So, stay tuned. Welcome back. If this is your first time here, welcome to the channel. I like to talk new technologies, and today is 4090. Now, recently, check out my, uh, my video here. I did get a 4090 Supreme, and uh, you can check out my review on that one. But this one is the Founders Edition. Now, what's special about this is this unboxing experience. I mean, even with the Supreme, it was kind of just a normal box, you know, with some bubble wrap. Uh, when I started to open this, I knew something was a bit different and kudos to NVIDIA for doing this. So here, watch this. If I were to, there's like a, along the bottom, uh, around here, there's like a, almost like a zip, kind of like zip, zip, zip in, in, in the cardboard. And then you start to open it. Then you see these arrows, open this. Okay. And then, Peel this guy back. I actually haven't done this yet. Okay. Ta-da. And then, I guess you lift it, you lift it out. Okay. Let's put that to the side. So here we go. I mean, there, there's the box. Wasn't, wasn't that neat with the, with the sides? I mean, I don't know, I thought it was pretty cool. So anyway, here it is. Here's the uh, 49, you can kind of see it from the side. Uh, anyway, it's uh, it's pretty cool. I'm still not really sure how you get into it. <laughs> ha ha, it says tear on the side here. Okay, uh, same thing on this side, tear, all right, and then, does it, da, 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 da. that's, that's pretty cool. There it is in its glory. Now, as you can imagine, it is pretty heavy. It almost just fell out there. Oh gosh. Uh, look, look at how thick this thing is. Oh my gosh. So here it is. Look at this, look at this up close. Uh, 490, kind of, it's interesting. So they have a kind of fan on the front and on the back. I mean, the design isn't anything mind boggling. If you're used to a Founders Edition uh, 3080, 3090, it, it's, all, it's all the same just a lot thicker. Uh, it does have a 12 pin uh, port here for power. Um, so I will see, I have already run into a 12 pin issue, not one catching on fire, uh, but just not powering up properly using the power supply that I have downstairs. So um, here, let me, let me get this. We'll, we'll get some B-roll uh, of the card itself. And then I'm gonna go grab my uh, Lian Li O11D mini case along with the 850 watt power supply that I have in there and see if I can get this thing powered up. So stay tuned and watch some B-roll. Snow White case. Uh, it actually still has the um, the 4090 Supreme in it. Uh, this is the uh, the 12 pin power supply cable that actually came with the Lian Li. Hold on, let me show you. <sighs> this little guy. So it's an SFX uh, power supply, which is required for this case. If you do get the um, Lian Li O11 Mini air from what i hear is you can get a regular size power supply in but it's because it's 
it's so thin here. But in the case of this one, I got this one, it's, it's the older uh, Snow White OLED-D, and I had to get an SFX. Now the biggest one I could find was 850 watts. Now I'll have a whole separate video on this, but by connecting that cable, that 12 pin connector, uh, the card turned on, but it would not boot. I had to actually uh, use three or four eight pin connectors and this power supply only has three. So anyway, long story short, uh, this did not work. I'm curious if it will work on the 4090 Founders Edition. Now, here is my 3090 Ti, okay, which it does work, it works perfectly fine. Hiding behind it is the new 4090. Just to give you a size comparison, they're almost identical in size. Talking maybe a half inch length difference. And then when it comes to thickness, uh, it, it's very similar. Very, very similar. So, if you use the 39 Ti, you should be fine. So, let me put this guy back. That. Okay. So uh, I'm going to take this um, MSI Supreme 490 out, uh, put the Founders Edition in, and then I brought I brought a get a monitor here so I can find out if it does boot or not. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's take it all apart. Next up, 4090's Founder Edition. Ta-da! Okay, now let's see if we can get this power supply cable connected. Ooh, it's got a pretty crazy bend. Well, let me see if I can get it from another angle. Let's see if we can get in from here. Oh yeah, that's better, that's better. Okay. It is in. Okay, cool. Let me move this guy over. what I expected considering that uh, the, the Super M4 had the same thing. So give me a second to grab the, uh, the actual adapter thingamajig out of the box and then we'll try that and see if it works. Okay, if you don't know the power supply I'm talking about, here, here's the box here. Uh, I'll, I'll leave a link down below. Uh, I'll put an Amazon link. Let's say if you guys do click a link uh, and you order something, we get a, a percentage or two off. It helps the support the channel. So thank you. Uh, by the way, if you're enjoying this so far, please leave a, leave a like and uh, yeah, let's see if I can find those cables. Okay. I was pretty impressed that even this Lanley power supply came with that 12 pin connector, given that it's still pretty new. Now the downside to this power supply, the limitation of this power supply is that it only has three eight pin connectors. As you can see by this fancy little device here, there are four, can you see it? There we go, there, there's four. Now, spoiler alert, you can use three. Uh, let me see if I can boot it up with it. Uh, it just limits the amount of power you can use. So, let's disconnect. Okay. Old cable is what I was talking about. So 
it was a two uh, eight pin connector uh, to uh, a 12 pin. What I was really hoping, because uh, Corsair has one of these you can buy that's still rated, it's rated for eight, 600 watts and it still only uses two eight pin uh, connections into the power supply. That is not the case with this Lanley. So, too bad. Now, I'm telling you right now, it is not recommended to run a 4090 on three of the four connectors. I will do it very temporarily just so the car boots up. Uh, when I go downstairs, I actually have a, Cors a Corsair RM1000 watt power supply that I'm daisy chasing onto this guy so I can do my full testing. But for right now, we can plug it in, see if it boots up, should be fine. And for that reason alone is why I'm very, I, I really wanted that single 12 pin connector to work. Uh, but yeah, let me boot this up now and see the post. <clears throat> click, 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 and go. We record this boot back here. Uh, Ta-da, booting fine. And that's, uh, that's what I expected. Cool. So a very, very similar experience uh, to the 4090 Supreme uh, that, that that power supply cable doesn't work. So just keep, keep that in mind. Make sure you have a power supply uh, that's strong enough. Um, so yeah, I mean, now I'm going to take this back downstairs. I'm going to hook it up properly uh, with the, uh, the bigger power supply, run some bench benchmarks, and uh, we'll compare and see how it does against the 3090. Uh, and also why not against the other 4090 we have it here. But I'll probably do a separate video doing a head to head against those anyway. But uh, stay tuned and I'll be back with some benchmark results. Hey, what's up? Welcome back. Okay, I have now thoroughly tested the uh, NVIDIA 4090 Founders Edition card. Now, I, I, I often go into these benchmarks thinking that the Founders Edition, you know, will do significantly worse than an IAB card. I, I'm usually wrong. I mean, this 4090 Founders Edition kicked ass. I was very impressed at how well it compared to the Supreme uh, 4090. Check out links in the video uh, if you haven't seen it. Um, it, it held its own in almost every case. So here, um, here, let's check out, uh, first some screenshots, uh, just of the benchmarks to throw those up on the screen. They're very similar to the Supreme where, you know, it, it's about 65 to 85% of what a, a 3090 Ti would be as far as a performance boost. When comparing it directly to the Supreme, they were almost identical. The Supreme might have been at 1% here or there. Um, but uh, you know, considering the cost, let's get into that. It, I, I mean, it's tough because the founder's edition is a hundred dollars us and then with tax, I mean, you know, it comes out to almost $200 less than the Supreme and it, it still performs just as well. So, I mean, ha, ah, is it still, oh, pause let's talk about the overclock settings because that's kind of where things got a little bit interesting so uh on the supreme i couldn't touch the core at all uh, and i was able to get the vram up to a thousand megahertz increase now with this fe card maybe i may have hit the lottery but i can increase the core by up to 200 and then the vram up to 500 okay that was a pretty good stable oc for a while and then i said well why don't we try and drop the core down to zero similar to the supreme I was able to get the VRAM up to 1300 megahertz increase uh, and, and it was stable. So that was a pretty significant jump over the Supreme for a card uh, that is cheaper. Now, it does beg to, to differ that the, the power limit on the uh, Supreme is 520 uh, watts, whereas on the FE, you can get the full 600. Now, speaking of power, um, I had to purchase an additional 
power supply just to run the car. I do the same thing with the Supreme because this Lee and Lee SFX power supply that I have in, in my case, it, it wasn't enough to power it. It only comes with three eight pin connectors. Um, so warning, if you have a Lee and Lee O11D D mini, you may not be able to power a 4090. So I will, and I, I did power it up with only three uh, and it does work. So in theory, if it's 150 watts per eight pin connector, but I wanna say it's even more 150 watts per rail. And if there's only two rails with three, I don't know, I wouldn't recommend pushing 520 watts through three eight pin connectors. That's definitely out of uh, the, scope of, of that range. So, I mean, up to you, up to you. I will, I will try it with another, uh, with another card. Uh, but for now, uh, I just, I used an external power supply and I daisy chained them together. All right. So how about the thermals? Uh, they were fine. Absolutely fine. Uh, GPU didn't go over 70 and the VRM didn't go over 80 identical to the Supreme, which usually in the case of most of the IABs, they put additional cooling on there uh, specifically so they could overclock them more. Um, I was able to get better overclocking than the Supreme. Same temps, so kudos NVIDIA. Uh, those temps are amazing. I would love to get my hands on a 4090 Asus ROG because it is that monster card uh, to see if the thermals are any better on that one. Okay, conclusion. This 4090 Founder Edition was awesome. Uh, it was really great that in the same week I was able to get a Supreme X uh, and the Founders Edition to kind of, kind of compare them. Uh, maybe, maybe I'll do a do a head-to-head -head video. If I do, I'll, I'll slap it up here uh, comparing the two cards directly. But I mean, for a card that's cheaper, overclocked the VRAM more, just as good thermals, sure, it doesn't have some kind of crappy RGB lighting. For me, hands down, I, I would go with the Founders Edition if you have the opportunity to pick one up please do they're amazing um yeah i was very very impressed maybe because i had this idea that it wouldn't perform as well but it absolutely did so thank you again for watching if you're into this content please subscribe and uh, stay tuned for the next one Hard to believe.